welcome to the very first episode of the Heart Hook Home Crocheted Podcast. This introductory episode, I want to use as kind of a get to know each other type of thing. Um, if you have followed me on YouTube and been a subscriber of my channel, you may have only seen my hands and not my face <laughs> or heard my story and, you know, learned more about me. So I wanted to share that with you. I also wanted to use this opportunity to talk about why I decided to create this podcast, um, the meaning behind Heart Hook Home, right? Um, and to just kind of get to know each other, what to expect from this podcast going forward and things like that. So first off, I wanted to say that I am very excited for this opportunity. I've been doing Facebook Lives over the years. I used to do them every week and then they kind of got more sporadic as time went on. But um, I'm, I'm very looking forward to this YouTube podcast series because obviously it's a video and I want to be able to show you what I'm working on. So if you want to just listen to it, that's fine. If you want to watch as well, then that's even better because I'm planning on doing, showing new tools that I'm using, showing new yarn that I'm getting. And whenever I get a yarn shipment in, when, you know, when I've ordered a bunch of yarn, I do every month, I order a box full of yarn. I figured we can unbox that yarn together and talk about my plans for that yarn. Or if it's a new yarn to me that I've never used before, new tools, new things like that. We might do some giveaways. We might, you know, all kinds of things. I'm very excited. This is going to be great. I also think that this platform on YouTube, having all of these podcasts on their one playlist under the Heart Hook Home YouTube channel, they will be so much easier to find. And since I am recording and uploading after the fact, it's going to be easy for me to link to exactly what I'm talking about in the description of the video so you can click and find exactly what it is that I'm talking about very quickly, very easily. Um, and it's going to be very easy for me to title these things so that you can find past videos very easy as well. Sometimes on Facebook, those videos from, you know, months ago, they kind of get lost and you kind of, it's hard to find them. So anyways, I'm very excited about this. I'm very happy that you're here and I think we're going to have a great time. If you have tuned into the live videos that I've done on Facebook, we have a lot of fun and you know sometimes depending on what time of day I'm recording these videos I might have a glass of wine with you and invite you to sit with me and have a glass of wine and open up a new box of yarn you know <laughs> um, which will probably be the next episode because I do have a box that is currently on its way to me now and I'm very excited about this box um, so yeah it's gonna be amazing so First things first, my name, I don't think I've told you my name yet. My name is Ashley and I am the crochet blogger and crochet designer behind hearthookhome.com. So let me give you some background really quick. Um, let's talk about how I got started and everything else. Um, back in 2009, it was June of 2009, I started dealdetectingdiva.com and you're like, what does that have to do with anything? Well, it doesn't really, um, except for that's what got me started into the whole blogging world, right? Basically, I was an extreme couponer and I taught coupon classes all around the Wichita area. I am in Kansas. Um, and yeah, I kind of made a name for myself as an extreme couponer and I taught people how to use coupons. I would match up the coupons with the deals every week and everything else. So if you're looking on Heart Hook Home and under the home category, you're gonna find a lot of finance tips, a lot of credit score tips, like boosting your credit score, you know, um, budgeting, financial health and financial advice, etc. And that is really stemming from my couponing days. I'm still very frugal to this day. I use coupons when it's convenient for me. Part of the reason that I decided to get away from the couponing is because it got very difficult. They, the stores made it more difficult to use coupons. The manufacturers started offering lower value coupons. You couldn't, um, you couldn't send in rebates on top of the coupons that like you used to do. So it just kind of, I don't know, the, one of the stores um, that was really amazing here in the Wichita area for couponing closed and it was kind of a bummer. I mean, that was really a total buzzkill, honestly. And after that happened, I just kind of thought, you know, I, I told my mom, I said, you know, Deal Detecting Diva was basically my identity and now Heart Hook Home is my identity, you know, but um, I told her, you know, I feel like, I feel like the diva's dying a slow death and I need to just put her out of her misery, right? And that is essentially what happened. <laughs> um, so um, when I changed over to hearthookhome.com, it was five and a half years ago. So it was on my actual birthday, my physical birthday. Um, so now when, whenever I turn a year older, the blog turns a year older. And so I kind of have that bond, you know, with the blog and I kind of treat her like 
obvious to see. I, I treat her like she's her own person, right? <laughs> um, but yeah, so I switched over to Heart Hook Home after my little brother taught me how to crochet. So I think it was around nine years ago now, I think, I'm not quite positive. My little brother, Forrest, who's only 15 months younger than me, he taught me how to crochet. And he came to visit, because um, they are from Denver, and he came to visit over that Christmas break and we sat on my couch and I cussed at this yarn for a good several hours. Like I couldn't do a chain, I couldn't do a single crochet, nothing was working out right. And I was just very frustrated. And one of the things that he told me that I remember to this day and I tell all of the people that I teach how to crochet in person, it's only one strand of yarn and you cannot screw it up so badly that you can't rip it out and start over again. And I thought, you know, that is probably the best piece of advice <laughs> I could have gotten, especially at that point, because, you know, it is, it is frustrating. And even now when I, when I, crochet something and it doesn't turn out the way that I had it envisioned in my head or just you know something isn't working out I think about that you like it's only one strand of yarn you cannot screw it up so badly that you can't rip it out and start over again it's fine you know it's fine even when you're knitting I, I am a beginner knitter I have branched out I'm starting to do more knitting patterns very beginner friendly um, and I want you to keep that in mind because because yes I have a ton of crochet patterns but I'm branching out into the knitting patterns and they are definitely definitely beginner friendly because I myself am a beginner knitter so crochet is always going to be my number one it's always going to be my my passion my my lifeblood you know that is one way that I have really learned to express myself so yeah let's talk about heart hook home and why I call it heart hook home so you will notice that there are three words, right? Heart, hook, and home in the blog name. And I wanted to talk a little bit about that so you can understand a little bit more about me and why I decided to name it that. So I have two sons. I have Caden and Cameron. They are 14 and 12, almost 15 and almost 13, which is insane. Um, our oldest son, Caden, is 14, almost 15, and he is six feet tall and it's just insane. I can't believe I'm looking up to my own kid. Um, especially at this age, you know? Um, but he was born with a very rare complex heart defect. So he has truncus arteriosus. And basically that means that instead of a pulmonary artery and the aorta, he just has one huge one. And so all of the blood that was being sent to his body was not oxygenated properly. And he, he lost a ton of weight after he was born. He wasn't diagnosed until he was two months old, um, exactly two months old. And then he had his first open heart surgery when he was three months old. He had his second open heart surgery when he was five months old. And he had his third open heart surgery when he was eight years old. So um, he's going to need them continually throughout his entire life. Um, but part of the reason that I decided to call it Heart Hook Home is because when he was diagnosed, it was early 2007 and there was no Facebook. So there were no Facebook groups for support groups or heart families or, you know, now you can go on Facebook and you can find a support group for just about anything, you know, whether it's, you know, a disease or some other medical affliction or addiction or anything like that. You know, you can find these support groups, which is amazing. But at that time, I had nothing. I, I was Googling and I was coming up with a whole bunch of nothing and I felt alone and it was very scary. It was, that was our first baby, you know? And I remember when he was diagnosed, um, a resident is one that found his heart murmur, actually. <laughs> he had been to the doctor multiple times, um, four or five times by this point, and none of them had heard his heart murmur or heard anything. And so a resident found it. And I remember that night when the cardiologist, after she had done the echocardiogram and she came back in the hospital room and she said, I need to speak to the parents. I remember looking at my mom, because our whole family was there. And I remember looking at my mom and thinking, okay, go, you know, like that can't be me, that's not mine, you know. and. It was just, it was a surreal experience. It really was. Um, so I wanted to be able to provide that kind of support for people like me that have no idea where to turn, right? Um, and just to say, you know, these, these emotions that you're having, they're valid, they're real. Um, and it's okay. And it's going to be okay. Um, these kids are so amazingly resilient. And modern medicine is a godsend. I mean, really. Um, so... Anyway, if you are a heart family or you know someone that has a baby that has just been re recently diagnosed with heart disease, one in 100 babies are born with um, 
a heart defect. Um, definitely send them to the heart section of Heart Hook Home, right? That's why I created it. And I know that it doesn't focus on crochet, but I do have some resources for friends of heart families as well. So if your friend, even if it's not heart related, if your friend isn't hospitalized with their child or their child is hospitalized and you're not sure how to support them, um, I've got resources for you as well as a friend. Because with Caden, when he was in, a, in the hospital, we were there for about five, five months a little less than five months, maybe four months. Um, they sent us home and then we went back and then we went home and then we went back again. And and it was a very traumatic experience, it really was. Um, but you know, something, one of the main themes that I remember from that time is that people are like, I don't know how to support you. You know, how am I supposed to help you through this? And so that is something that I provide there as well. So anyway, um, that is why the heart is there in the heart hook home. So the hook, obviously is for crochet um, and crafting and everything in general. Um, yes, uh, when I was very young, um, I started dabbling in crafts. I remember my mom, um, I believe that she taught sewing classes at the YWCA when she was a young woman, uh, before she got married and before she had us, um, the three of us. I have an older sister as well and she is a knitter. She's a fabulous knitter and um, she made me a sweater and I I wore it the other day and I just, I could just feel the love, you know, like wrapped in a big old hug. <laughs> but um, I remember when, when we were very little, I think I was in kindergarten, my mom started teaching us um, how to sew. And she had this sewing machine and it's a singer and it's a it's one of those you know sturdy old so singer sewing machines you know that the one that's gonna survive the apocalypse you know what I mean um, and she taught us all how to crochet a pillow and a pocket and or not crochet so <laughs> see crochet on the brain right but she taught us all how to sew using the sewing machine and I remember making rompers and jumpsuits and all kinds of dresses and things we have this there's this picture of me and my sister when we lived in Denver and we have these matching blue dresses from the late 80s and with these huge sleeves I mean these huge sleeves we look like Belle from Beauty and the Beast, like huge sleeves, this huge white doily thing coming off of our necks, you know, and we made those, my mom made those dresses, you know. <laughs> um, I, I can't believe I just remember that. I'm gonna have to find that photo now. Maybe I can put a little inlay um, in the video so you can see it. But um, when my sister got married, um, she's a few years older than me. And so when she got married, mom and I and Meadow helped um, make the bridesmaids dresses. So we made four bridesmaids dresses uh, for my sister's wedding. And that was 22 years ago now. And let me just tell you that I never want to never want to sew with tool again. <laughs> tool is the devil. I am done. I'm never doing that again. Um, but I still have that dress and we did amazing on those dresses and I'm very proud of that. And I'm very, very thankful. I still have mine. Very thankful that I learned you know, how to look at a sewing pattern and how to decipher it because that I think has really helped me to grow my crochet designing skills, right? So I'm, um, I would like to say that growing up, making these dresses, seeing how these pieces of fabric were cut and then put together and how it created, you know, the shoulder or how it created, you know, the the pleats on pants or anything like that, um, which is dating, obviously, <laughs> dating my sewing patterns or sewing skills. Um, but it, it really helped me to see how things go together and how how to design things or how to shape things in a way that would be either flattering or that would just flat out work, you know, because every, not everything you try is going to work out. And so um, I'm very thankful that she took the time to both teach us how to do that and that I retained, you know, that knowledge um, going forward. So now to this day, my mom, she does some quilting, not a lot, but she does do some quilting. My brother um, crochets and he sews a lot. He has made a lot of baby blankets and quilts and things like that for, for friends. Like whenever his coworkers are having a baby, he always crochets them a baby blanket. And he's made several, he made Cameron, my youngest son. Um, he, his nickname is Camo, right? Like camouflage, but he made him a Camo um, Snuggie <laughs> blanket when he was a little boy or tiny you know infant and that's something that I still have and it's just really nice that that to hold on to those memories and it's always interesting when I tell people that my brother is the one that taught me to crochet because it's not typical right so I crochet obviously 
thanks to my brother, and I do sew. Um, not a lot. I have two sewing machines. I have one singer that's very old, and I have a brother that's pretty new, um, and I prefer the old beast. I really do. It's just sturdier. It's stronger. Um, I, I don't know if it's just me <laughs> or what, because I've had that machine longer, but um, yeah, I, I love it, and so I'm getting into the knitting a little bit. It's not really not really my thing. I'm trying to make it my thing. I'm trying to envision it more. I'm also getting more into Tunisian crochet, which you will see on my YouTube channel. Um, all of these Tunisian tutorials that I'm coming out with. Um, and my, my big sister, she is amazingly smart. She has a PhD um, and she teaches anatomy and it's mind blowing, you know, and it, it is funny or not funny. It's interesting to hear her talk about my son's heart defect too, you know, like she, she has all of these crazy insights into the medical, you know, behind the scenes type of thing. And I'm like, I have no idea what you're talking about right now, but you are so smart and I love you for it. <laughs> this is basically how it happens. Right. Um, but no, she's a knitter and she does do some sewing as well. So basically we're just a very big crafty family. Um, and sometimes when they are in town, we'll have like, when I've done my Facebook lives in the past, when we're all together, sometimes we'll do a Facebook live with the three of us or just the two of us, depending on who is together. So hopefully maybe at some point, um, one of those will join me. One of them will join me in these little crochet podcasts that I'm starting. So yeah, very exciting. Um, and then, okay, so we've got the heart, we've got the hook, and now we've got the home. And basically the home is all recipes, um, financial tips, things like that. Um, yeah, basically, um, if you have followed my blog for any period of time, you may have realized that recently I went through some major life changes and I am starting to cook more for myself. Um, which is a huge endeavor. Um, I have never been a chef. I've never been a very big, you know, kitchen person. I'm just not. Um, I mean, I'll eat all the good food, but, but I'm not very good at cooking it. So I have been known to burn mac and cheese. I mean, it's just, that's my level of expertise there, right? So I'm trying to branch out, trying to get better. Um, I'm also, you know, branching out, updating older recipes, trying things, trying new things, just testing the waters a little bit. So on the home section, there are recipes, there are financial tips, there are other crafty things like DIYs and things like that. And yeah, admittedly, I don't do a whole lot with the heart section and with the home section. The hook in the middle is really where my jam is. So going forward, I plan on having these bi-weekly video crochet podcasts. So every other Friday, I plan to upload a new episode of the crochet podcast with whatever I'm working on for that week or those two weeks, right? If I get a new box of yarn in, then I will record me opening this box of yarn and we'll talk about, you know, the fiber content, um, what I'm going to use it for, how I'm going to design this particular piece, what hook size I want to use with a certain size of yarn type of thing, right? I also want to talk more about designing and how to design crochet patterns. Why you would want to use a certain stitch over another stitch. Why you would want to use a different hook size as opposed to this hook size. Why I would make increases on this side of the pattern and not this side of the pattern or some, you know, anything like that. Um, I also want to talk about gauge. I want to talk about color changing. I want to talk about content of um, fiber content of your yarn. Um, when you're making something for the kitchen, why do you want to use more of a cotton instead of an acrylic, you know? Um, all kinds of things. And and I think it's going to be really amazing being able to, I don't know, just, I feel like I'm rambling a little bit, right? But I feel like also we're friends and if we can chit chat and hang out and you guys learn something in the process, then this is a wonderful opportunity and it's so much fun. Um, when I'm opening these boxes, when I'm doing these videos, it is fun for me too. So like I said, I am very much looking forward to this new crochet podcast series. So about 20 to 30 minutes every single time is what I'm going to shoot for and every other Friday. So if there are topics that you want me to discuss, whether it's designing or I mean, anything, right? Reading a chart, reading a graph, how to, how to do this or how to do that. Um, drop them in the comments so that I can um, interact with you and to kind of see what it is that you're looking to get out of these podcasts. This is something that I have been 
looking forward to so much. And now that it, the time is here, it's such an exciting time and I'm very happy that we are able to do this together and I am looking forward to so much fun. So, um, definitely very excited. If you guys have any questions or anything like that, please let me know. And I look forward to visiting with you every other Friday on the Heart Hook Home YouTube channel. Make sure that you subscribe and click the notifications. Um, you will get an email every time I upload a new video to YouTube. And of course, on um, every other Friday will be those podcast episodes. So definitely follow along, share with me. Um, and I look forward to hanging out with you guys, maybe having a glass of wine every once in a while <laughs> and just, you know, seeing where it takes us and showing off new things and having fun and learning together and growing together. So thanks for hanging out with me today, guys. And I will be back in two weeks with a fresh new episode um, with an unboxing. Hopefully my yarn is here by then. And I have a fresh new episode unboxing going over new yarn and, and tools and everything else. So thanks for watching and I will see you guys soon. Bye.